What's up, everyone, and welcome to Scourge of War Waterloo, episode 24. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, before we get started today, uh, I just want to make something real clear. My job here has always been to show you guys the easiest, most efficient, most dependable, and most repeatable ways to achieve a major victory in every single scenario. That uh, it doesn't mean it's always going to be glorious. It doesn't mean it's always going to be uh, close to what happened historically. Um, and it doesn't always mean it's going to be fair. And a lot of that is the case with this uh, episode. We're going to be playing today the French Corps scenario, Count Derlon's Attack. Um, now, this scenario, if you get a major victory in it, unlocks WL05, which is the Lai Hassant Brigade scenario. Now, this scenario and Lai Hassant are very closely intertwined because no two scenarios in the game that are carryover scenarios um, have more impact on the follow-up scenario than this one does. <clears throat> uh, the brigade you play in Lai Hassant, the brigade scenario that we covered in episode six, um, is part of Count Derlon's attack, uh, or is Count Derlon's core. So the losses it takes in this scenario carry over to the uh, brigade scenario, uh, Lai Hassan. And that's the brigade you play in, in, in Lai Hassan. It's, it's Charlet's brigade. Um, and recently I found some ultra BS in this scenario uh, that basically lets you cripple the Allied forces around Lai Hassant while not using Charlet's Brigade at all and basically making it so you're going to take no losses at all with the Brigade you're going to use for Lai Hassant. And basically you're going to cripple the Allied forces uh, around Lai Hassant. So the Lai Hassant Brigade scenario it will be a complete cakewalk, um, much more so than what I covered in way back in episode six. As I said, this is something I discovered recently. Um, uh, so uh, the, uh, the the playthrough I did of Lai Hassan was based on an earlier uh, uh, win that I achieved in Count Derlin's attack, where I just hadn't, you know, I won the scenario, I achieved a major victory, but I didn't know all the BS uh, and um, ways to exploit and abuse game mechanics that I do now. Um, so basically, I have turned Count Derlon's attack uh, into one of the easiest scenarios in the game. Um, most people, when they play the scenario, they try and do, um, you know, kind of what was done historically, where Count Derlon's whole core uh, attacks, you know, the, the center of the Allied line and, uh, <clears throat> you know, tries to... Uh, you know, basically split Wellington Center and attack by Lance Brigade up on the ridge and so forth. Um, you know, there's been a lot of playthroughs of, of uh, people who have played the scenario and uh, basically done that, you know, done what you see in the movie Waterloo and, you know, what most people do. Uh, I don't play this game like some sort of historical simulation. I never have. I look for ways to use the game mechanics to make everything as easy as possible. You guys have seen me do it repeatedly. I use skirmishers to turn artillery around. Uh, I use tricks with engagement distances. I use formations like the fortress that never existed historically. Whatever I can do to get a stupid unfair advantage is what I do. Um, I break games. That's what I do. And... When I find exploitable mechanics, I abuse the hell out of them. Now, you know, that might not be fair, might not be honorable, um, you know, it might not, uh, you know, even seem, uh, you know, like uh, you guys would want to necessarily learn how to play that way. Um, you know, that's, that's fine. You know, I'm showing you what you can do and what the best and most efficient strategies in the game are. And... You know, you don't have to use them, but I 
do advise you to learn them because uh, these are things that are going to help you uh, in understanding the game mechanics and, and, and how it works. Um, and we're going to do some dirty, dirty stuff in the scenario. I know I say that like before every scenario, um, but I can't help it. I just have, there's so much dirt that I know about this game and how to exploit it. Um, you know, that I, I, I always seem to find something good. Uh, and, uh, re this is a, a recent find. I only found this uh, maybe about a month, m month and a half ago. Um, I've already uh, done it. I've already checked out the effects on the Lai Hassan Brigade scenario, and it's just it's just hilarious. Um, so if, if you want to make Lai Hassan as easy as possible, I, I, I advise doing what I'm going to do in this scenario. All right, so uh, we're playing Count Derlant's First Corps. The length of play is one hour. And we command, obviously, the first corps of the Army of the North. Um, and here's the note that says the scenario carries over to WL05, which is the Lihassant Brigade scenario, meaning that most of the casualties you, you sustain will also be gone in, in Waterloo 05. They phrase that kind of funny. Um, what that really means is the casualties that you sustain will still be applied uh, will carry over to that scenario. Not that they'll disappear. Those casualties will apply uh, to the Lai Hassan Brigade scenario. However, the brigade that we play in Lai Hassan, we're not even going to use. So they're not going to take a single loss. And like I said, this is just some of the BS. And here's the situation. Emperor Napoleon has ordered a massive artillery bombardment on the Allied position, followed by a grand infantry assault on their left. DeSalle's guns under your command are all in position along the ridge to inflict maximum damage. Your entire corps, minus Donzalot's cavalry division and a brigade from Durette's division that was engaged at Papalot, will make the attack. Uh, that, um, that brigade is Bruce, uh, Bruce Brigade. We covered that attack in episode four, I believe, and that was uh, the attack on Papalot. Uh, so those troops are not available to us. It's basically one brigade from one division. The ground is muddy and the air is filled with artillery projectiles, but your men will not falter, and the mission is attack and destroy the enemy left. Uh, so, okay, uh, we're going to scroll down here, and here we have... Uh, the whole situation here, we have four divisions. We have, you know, Passage, Donzalot, Markhope, and uh, Durette's division is out over there off the map. And uh, there are three objectives in the scenario. Lai Hassant, the Allied left, the Allied right. Um, they're all worth uh, 100 to 150 points a minute. I believe this one is 100 points per minute. These two are 150 points per minute. Now, as I said, most people, when they play this scenario, they do this they take all this and they try to go for here we're not going to do any of that um we're not concerned with any of this all we're concerned with is lie hassant it's worth 100 points per minute and this is an hour scenario and we need 3,000 points for a major victory with an objective that's 100 point for, per 100 points per minute as long as you capture it quickly that's fine you're you're going to earn enough for a major victory. You just got to get it quick. And uh, I'm going to show you some BS on how we're going to do it really, really quickly. Um, and uh, you know, we're not going to mess with any of this. Who cares? Uh, you know, we're not here to beat Wellington. We're here to defeat the scenario and uh, achieve the conditions needed to get a major victory. And that's simply a number of points. However you can do that is you know, enough to get you a major victory. Uh, so why why make it hard on yourself? Why try and try and attack all of this? We can just attack Lai Hassan, get in there early, and sit there and rack up the points. You know, it's, this is not a difficult scenario. People make it a difficult scenario because they think that's what they're supposed to do. They've seen the movie, they know the story, you, you know, uh, Derlan's, you know, grand infantry assault on the center of Wellington's lines. That's great for a novel, it's great for a movie, but this is a video game. And I'm going to show you how to beat the scenario without having to do any of that. It's, it's pointless. You always want to take the easiest, most efficient, most repeatable, and most dependable route to victory. That's what we're going to do. Alright, so we're going to scroll down a little bit more here, and 
Okay, so uh, we're commanding the first corps, which is Durlan. We have technically four in infantry divisions, really three and a half, because uh, our rightmost division, Durets, one of his brigades, Brew, is not available. So really, we have three and a half infantry divisions, ten artillery batteries, eighty guns, and we really have something around twenty thousand men. Uh, and Brew's brigade of Durets fourth division is not available, as we said before. Three thousand points for a major victory. That is very, very low. Um, for a scenario of this size and with three objectives that are worth, you know, 150 points uh, or 100 points if you're talking about Lai Hassan. This is super easy. You know, this is one of the easiest scenarios in the game, uh, especially um, with, you know, some of the recent BS I've discovered. Uh, all right, so let's roll this thing down. As always, here's the biography. And... Uh, by all means, if you want to read it, you can uh, pause the video or just look at it when you're playing the game. You know, I don't feel like reading it. All right, here we go. All right, so here's our core commander, Count Derlan, with our courier. And it says, Mon General, begin your attack on the enemy left. Strike them aggressively and discover the strength of their defenses. Napoleon. All right. So the very first thing we're going to do, this is the brigade you use in Lai Hassan, Charlet. And we're just going to get them out of there. We're going to put park them back behind uh, La Belle Alliance, set them up in column of line, and we're not going to use them. So they're completely preserved for when you have to use them in the Lai Hassan Brigade scenario. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take uh, Bourgeau's Brigade. And we're going to sneak them out kind of right by this tree. This is the tree right here that I always go for. And set them up in column by division, facing kind of the Orchid and, and Lai Hassan. And then what we're going to do is take these two other brigades, Schmitz and Allard, of Donzelot's division, that I'm sure you guys remember from uh, Napoleon's finale. We got them all killed. Uh, but uh, they've been resurrected, and here they are. And we're going to just move them over to the left. Um, and basically just save them for later. Right now we're really only going to be working with Bourgeot's brigade. But we'll bring these guys over for later. We will use them later on. You guys are probably wondering, Rob, what the hell are you doing? This looks really, really weird. Don't worry, it'll all make sense shortly. You can see our massive... Uh, battery of artillery out there. 80 guns, and uh, we're really not going to use a lot of them. We're only going to use about three batteries. And uh, the rest of them, we're just going to uh, let them do their thing. You know, earn whatever points they're going to earn. You'll notice that Lai Hassan, the fort itself, is not occupied. Nobody's in it. And this is, this is, uh, this is not like a uh, the Lai Hassan video I covered in episode six, where uh, you know, in the, in in that episode, um, it was a result of my success in Counterland's attack, and we also started off with uh, Lai Hassan uh, unoccupied. Um, but depending on your results in the Counterland's attacks in this scenario, that might not always be the case. But I'm going to show you how to make it the case every single time. So, in this scenario, though, this is not a carryover scenario. Everybody's version of this scenario will be exactly the same. So, what I do here, you can do. Now, uh, the, the, uh, the initial strategy I'm using here, I actually originally came up with um, uh, for the Lai Hassan scenario. Um, Basically, I was trying to help a, 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 another uh, viewer, a, a subscriber, 
um, who was having problems with the scenario because he he unlocked it by by editing it as opposed to actually playing this scenario, and it caused uh, his lot version of Lai Hassan to be much different than mine. Um, so I couldn't figure out what was wrong with his scenario and, and, and why it was so different from mine. It ended up being that he just because he unlocked it by actually altering the, the program and, and editing the scenario so that it could just be played without having to play counter launch attack. So uh, that ended up being the problem, not anything I did. Um, but it did lead me to discover this tactic I'm going to use here. Um, and basically this involves manipulating engagement distances. If you attack Lai Hassan from the front here, um, there's a bunch of troops in the Orchid. But right now, we're away from their engaged distance. So they're just laying down, huddled in position, uh, and they're not moving. And we're staying out of their engaged distance. Uh, so basically, we're not provoking them. And we're going to get the jump on them. So we're going to advance very carefully. I usually go into this little, halfway through this little blade of grass, this little field right here. And I'm going to send two battalions. One here, and I'm going to put, like, one here. And then what we're going to do is click them. There's nobody in Lai Hassan. We're going to run them into Lai Hassan and get the jump on all these guys and outflank them. They're all laying down. You can see them. They, they have no idea what we're doing here. This is, this is completely unexpected. Uh, very similar to what we did in the last scenario where we approached uh, the town of Ligny from a completely unexpected direction and the AI was like, what? That's what we're doing here. We're going to completely catch them by surprise with their pants down. Uh, and we're going to bolt into uh, Lai Hassan, which is an objective. Uh, and it's worth 100 points per minute. And we're going to get it very, very quickly without firing a shot. Um, and uh, when these guys realize what's up, they're going to try and start heading into Lai Hassan. But we're already going to be in there. And we're going to take these two brigades that we're sending over here and send them into the Orchid while these guys have their back to us and, and, and charge them into oblivion. Uh, this is a complete setup, and this is what I mean when I say the AI is one-dimensional. It cannot predict things like this, where you, you show them the right and then you hit them with the left. It just can't do that. It just functions on whatever comes within its engaged distances. And these units are going to come within its engaged distance first as we enter the fort. Uh, it doesn't know it. The AI doesn't know it's being set up. Um, so here we go. We're going to start moving these battalions towards the orchid here. We're going to double quick them. Um, it's okay that we're double quicking because after all this is over, they're going to get a lot of rest. So they'll be able to recover their fatigue. Now, as you see, some of these units are standing up now. They realize what the heck is going on. How are these guys getting the jump on us? and they're going to start trying to head for the fort. By the time they do, it's going to be too late. We're going to be in there. Now, you notice I have the officer with uh, these two brig battalions and not this one. You're probably thinking, Rob, why didn't you send the officer into the fort with the battalions so you can occupy the objective and start getting points from it? Well, when I initially started doing this, um, uh, 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 what I basically found is that these troops try to run through the fort, even though you can't attack through a fort. But in some instances, I ended up getting the officer killed. So, and then I had to bring like a division commander up to occupy the fort. It still works, but why get your officer killed if you don't have to? Um, now you'll notice these guys are facing the fort, and I'm charging, charging into their rear. This is what I mean. This is this is how you set the AI up to make a. Uh, it, 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 it doesn't, it can't predict this kind of stuff. It, it doesn't understand feints and diversions and basically being straight up tricked. So that's basically what happened here. It got completely fooled, completely tricked, and uh, it, it doesn't know what happened. Um, this is completely unexpected from what the scenario, I guess the... Uh, scenario designer expected you to do. So the AI is just completely unprepared uh, for a maneuver like this. It just it, it never expected this. So now we have the fort and we've driven off all these battalions. Um, 
Uh, so now we're going to bring uh, our uh, brigade commander, Bourgeau, and uh, we'll get him up into the fort, and we will, we will be able to occupy the objective. You know, and uh, real easy. As long as you stay, basically, it's all in the approach. As long as you stay outside of the engaged distance and don't give these guys any, uh, don't come within range to arouse them. You can just sneak on out here, and then once you get around here with two battalions, just sneak them in there, and then take the other battalions and swing around their flank as they realize what's happening and they start trying to face the fort. You're going to charge them in the rear and just send them all packing. Um, you know. Completely, completely catching the AI with their pants, with their pants down, uh, and that'll work every single time. Uh, it uh, the, the AI doesn't just it doesn't think like that. It doesn't know it's get it doesn't know when it's getting fooled uh, or when it's being tricked, and that's essentially what we did. Uh, so uh, we're going to bring a battery up. We're going to actually bring two batteries up and park them on either side of Liaison. Uh, as you recall, whenever I've talked about, um, you know, fortified positions like this, I always tell you that the way to drive forces out of a fortified position like this is by surrounding the fort on as many sides as possible. So we're going to basically stop that from happening by making it very, very dangerous for allied units to try and approach either side, any side of the fortress of the, uh, of the fort here. But this one. This is, this is the only one we're going to let you guys come on. Everything else here, here, we're going to set up a death zone. So we already have the, uh, the Lai Hassant. Uh, you can see it's 100 points a minute. Every single time, every minute we hold it, we get 100 points. And it's very, very early in the scenario. So, uh, you know, we have plenty of time to just milk this objective for all it's worth. And the cool thing about fort objectives is the radius is so small, basically the inside of the fort, they can't be contested. The only way to actually get objectives that are forts is to occupy them. So as long as we occupy the fort, as many allied units as they want can come as close as they want to it, and they cannot contest the objective. Only objectives that are out in the open can be contested. So we got two units in there, and, and I'm not going to over-cram it right now, because um, uh, basically if units get routed out of the fort, we're just going to send more units in from behind the fort. We're going to have a huge supply of men here uh, to, to make this happen. You know, we have seven brigades under our command, four divisions. Um, we're not even going to use them all. I mean, eventually I bring a lot of them over here just cause, but really a lot of them aren't even used. So, you can see over in the back here that some of these allied units are waking up, and a lot of them are going to wake up uh, and, and basically realize, wait, we're not being attacked? Oh, maybe we should go on the attack. And that's what they do, but as I said, the, uh, the AI is very predictable in its attacks, and, uh, you know, we're going to set up a very warm greeting for them. So those two brigades, Schmidt and Allard, uh, from Donzelot Division, that I brought over to the uh, left before. Uh, I'm bringing them over. We're going to start congregating our troops around Lai Hassan and setting up a defense. We're bringing artillery up on either flank of Lai Hassan to make them basically unapproachable. Uh, now, when I'm bringing all these troops up, um, to bring them up, and just because this is a kind of a small space we're working in, I'm bringing them up in the, in the column of line brigade formation, which is a formation I use when I just want to keep 
troops in a in a compact formation and and, and not have them take up a lot of space it's basically just uh, every battalion in line kind of one right behind the other <coughs> it's not really a, a, an attack formation it can be actually but uh, mostly I use it just to uh, um, just to keep my formations compact so these two units here are the ones that did the charging at the beginning and we've pushed these units back far enough now. Um, they're not much of a threat. So we're going to bring these two units back into the orchard behind Lai Hassant, where they're nice and hidden, uh, you know, amongst the trees and behind the fort. And they're going to recover their fatigue. And uh, we'll have them right here to send them into Lai Hassant if we need them. And we also have a whole other brigade set up right behind them. Uh, and we have another brigade set up right behind this artillery. We're going to bring another brigade over here and set them up behind this. We're just going to congregate a huge amount of men around this position so that the allies can really only attack the fort from the front. And approaching on the sides uh, are, uh, is going to be very, very hazardous. So here they come. You can see they're coming with, uh, looks like, two brigades to start. However, this entire division over here will eventually get involved, too. Uh, but they're going to come with two brigades to start, and uh, they're going to head kind of right for this area. And uh, like I said, we're going to make it very hazardous to try and move any further. So uh, we already have 1,100 points, a third of the way there. And we're only about 15 minutes into the scenario. And like I said, it is always easier to defend in this game than attack. Uh, so basically we slipped into Lai Hassan, kind of, again, just like in the last scenario, without the enemy even realizing what was happening, we snagged the objective. And uh, now all the hard work is, uh, is on their end. And we're going to basically sit here and set up death for them. Which seems a lot easier to me than trying to take our whole core and attack this whole line back here, all the way from here to Papala, which is what I see everybody else do. Um, and I've actually done that, too. Uh, and, you know, the scenario is totally winnable that way, too, if that's what you want to do. Um, all three objectives can be, ca uh, can be covered, uh, can be captured. I'll, st I'll still say that the Lai Hassan objective is the most important one because what you do here affects the Lai Hassan Brigade scenario. Uh, but it can be done that way. I've done it. I, I've scored even higher than I scored here doing that. I once did that, did it that way and scored like 10,000 points. Um, but it's certainly, you know, more difficult. It's uh, not as dependable, uh, not as repeatable, uh, unless you really know what you're doing. Um, and... As I've said, I think I said this way back in episode two, a major victory is a major victory. Whether you're one point over what you need for a major victory or 10,000 points over, there's nothing higher than a major victory. Uh, so you don't necessarily need to get some ungodly amount of points uh, to get the job done here. You know, why make things difficult on yourself if you don't have to? Uh, you guys may be recognizing what's going on over here. I told you guys we'd be seeing a lot more of this. Uh, setting up the fortress. This is a, a formation I abuse the hell out of because it's so good. And uh, I'm just making neat lines here, that's, that's all. And uh, got our skirmishers out in front of our, uh, out in front of our artillery. I got this unit a little crooked, but I'm sure I'll straighten it out. And you'll notice I'm kicking the skirmishers out, just like we talked about in the Grog Toolbar Demystified final episode. I'm kicking the skirmishers out from the rear units so that I'm not taking strength away from these units. 
I have plenty of infantry over here. I mean, this is this is this is a super fortress. What I'm making right here. Uh, there we go. Straighten out, boys. Look nice. Uh, but again, I'm kicking the skirmisher units out from the rear units, the ones that aren't up front, so that the strength of the assault columns stays at full. You know. Uh, so basically, the stuff that I showed you guys in the final episode of the Grog Toolbar Demystified. You know, as these as these uh, core and army scenarios go on, you will start to see how it's actually applied in 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 game and how it works. Uh, it's basically exactly as I described it in uh, in that uh, in episode four of the Brock Toolbar Demystified. Uh, there's no cavalry in this episode, so we're basically going with kind of the infantry version. And again, I'm just making neat lines here. That's just what I do when I'm waiting around and there's really nothing to do. Waiting for the Allies to get their act together here and uh, start trying to make an attack here. So we have... Uh, 1150 points for uh, Bourgeois' brigade here. Uh, we'd have to click on Derlon to see how many points we have total because this only accounts uh, for uh, Bourgeois' brigade. I, I don't really want to bring Derlon and put him into the fort here. Um, you know, it's kind of up close and, in, in, you know, in the action. I certainly don't want to get Derlon killed, you know, because he's us. That's who we are in the scenario, but uh, I do bring him up kind of just so he's close by, so I can uh, click on, uh, you know, click on him and see how many points we, we have. So we got our fortress set up here, and uh, this is a monster right here. Uh, nobody's breaking through this, not a chance. And I actually will uh, eventually uh, advance the fortress a little bit. Not much, just kind of, just to get them in, just to inch them up into canister range as more allied units kind of come down here. Because as a lot of units really start firing on this fort, uh, you know, it is, and the fort, especially as the fort gets bombarded and, um, you know, damage starts happening to the fort, um, you know, they start to inflict casualties here. So we need to kind of move the fortress up so that we can start helping the guys in the fort out by really smashing these units that are shooting at them. So you can see I'm advancing the skirmishers and I'll advance kind of the entire fortress behind them, bring the artillery forward, bring the assault columns forward, and just kind of move everything up so that uh, we can slowly inch these guns into, uh, into canister range. You know, and this is how you do it. This is how you uh, basically can advance guns to get them into range to use uh, canister, which, as I said, is the most deadly form of fire in the game. There's nothing like canister fire in the game. Uh, so you screen the guns with the skirmishers, and you slowly move them forward, uh, you know, until you hear the canisters start going off, and you know you're there. Uh, so we've uh, we've inched our skirmishers up a little bit, and we're going to start moving the guns up a little bit move the assault columns up a little bit, just kind of start inching everything forward uh, until we uh, we hear the guns start to uh, fire canister at the, uh, the infantry unit, and there they go. There they go. We are there. So yeah, we're only concerned with Lai Hassan. We're not worrying about any of those the the other two objectives that are all the way up there. Uh, you know, there's there's one, there's another one way out here somewhere. Uh, you know, and they're worth a lot of points, but you know, it's gonna cost you a lot of men to get them. There's a lot of uh, artillery, there's violence brigade is out there. There's a lot of stuff out there. 
there's no reason to fight any of this stuff. We've we've got an objective that's going to give us 100 points a minute, and we've got plenty of time to get past uh, 3,000 points. So we've got our artillery in the canister range, and they're going to start putting a walloping on this unit right here. And uh, our skirmishers are not even engaged. We are close enough, but uh, this unit is tied up fighting, uh, shooting at the uh, troops in Lai Hassan here. So free canister fire for everybody. So we have 2,000 points, two-thirds of the way there. Uh, easy money, as they say. Uh, so we, we have another battery set up over here. Uh, I'm not really too concerned about protecting them because there's, there's really nothing going on on this side. Uh, and there usually isn't. So uh, I've just kind of set them up to start blowing away. Uh, you know, we have all these brigades. We might as well start bringing them around, bringing them around here. Uh, there's Passage, our division commander. So we're going to bring another brigade and just set them up behind this battery. I don't really bother making a fortress out of them, I just kind of want them there. Although I do think I'd go and send out some skirmishers to just put in front of the battery, just to have them there. And I'm just moving this line back a little bit, uh, only because, you know, canister fire, you burn through a lot of it very quickly, especially the howitzers. So, uh, we're bringing our supply wagon up, and I just want to create room here to run them back and forth between the, uh, you know, all the caissons. So we can keep that canister a firing. And, uh, we're just, we're just smashing this battalion right here. We're just letting them have it. Um... These are brave lads. They're standing here taking it for quite a while, and they're getting smashed on. Uh, those may be guard units, actually. They may have a very high troop quality, and that's why they are uh, standing there taking the beating of their lives. But uh, even guard units are not invincible. Enough of that canister smashes them, and it, 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 uh, they will take off. And they're just taking it right now. They're getting pounded. So, 2,500 points. We're only 500 points away from major victory. Like I said, this is uh, now one of the easiest scenarios in the game. That's Charlet's brigade back there, the one used for Lai Hassan. And uh, we're basically keeping them completely out of the action here so that they don't have any carryover losses at all uh, for the Lai Hassan brigade scenario. Part of me wants to go back and redo that now because uh, I have a real, real easy way to beat that scenario. Even easier than I, uh, even easier than I did it in that video. But um, you know that the way I did it in that video will still work here too. Uh, you know, it'll still work. It's not as uh, devious and underhanded as what you can do now. Which is essentially the same maneuver I did at the beginning, except you're going to do it with Charlet's Brigade. Um, you know, I don't even have to show you. I can just tell you. It's exactly the same as what we did with Peugeot's Brigade. Move out here, and then just dash into the fort. And uh, just do that with the Lai Hassan scenario, with, and with Charlet's Brigade. It works exactly the same way. You know, if you do this, there won't be anybody in the fort. You will have destroyed, crippled the Allied forces uh, around the fort, and it will be unoccupied, and the units will be very under strength that you'll be fighting. Um, and you just basically use the same man opening maneuver that we used in this scenario to get into the fort and occupy it. And you'll get an absurd amount of points. You'll get like 11,000 points or something. You know, I only need like 1,000 for a major victory in that scenario. Uh, yeah, so after beating this scenario, 
if you go back, you will have unlocked Lai Hassan, the brigade scenario. If you go back and play it, uh, just you, you just use the same opening maneuver that we used here. It works exactly the same. And just dash your way into that fort. I'm bringing some more guns over, some more brigades over. Just hoarding my troops kind of around this fort so that uh, the position is just completely impregnable. So you can see this division here now, another two brigades, they're coming down. And uh, they have a they have a super fortress here that they don't have a prayer in hell of breaking through. And I'm bringing still more troops over. I mean, you know, this is this is overkill at this point. <laughs> Meanwhile, also whatever points these guns are accruing, and they are accruing points, applies to our total score because technically we're commanding a whole core including all those guns. Uh, you know, so it's just, you know, free points. You know, and, you know, every gun over there is getting, like, 80, 100 points. You know. So, uh, this unit in here is getting pounded on. They're definitely not getting the best of it. Um, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. You know, we just need troops in there to occupy the objective so that we keep getting points from it. Um, and we're battering the hell out of the units that are shooting at them anyway. We're just doing it with other troops. And if they run, so what? Doesn't matter. We have so many troops parked behind Lai Hassan, we'll just send another unit in. No big deal. You can see the, uh, the fort is starting to take some damage now. Look at these guys. Finally they run. They left about half their number on the ground there. Look at that. They're a lot smaller than they were when they started out, weren't they? But uh, finally we've uh, broken them. They, uh, they ate way more canister than they ever should have. But we have uh, another whole division here. What do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six battalions, probably two brigades. But, uh, you know, this is, this is going to be rough for them. Lyhasan is occupied. If they try and advance, they're going to get shot in the flank by the troops in the fort. And this is, you know, this is devastation here waiting for them. You know, they don't want to get too close to that. <clears throat> so we got 2,000 points just uh, for... Bergeau's brigade, so we're probably either over or very close to uh, 3,000 points for uh, a major victory under with Derlon. And as you can see, these units are starting to deploy very, very far away from this fortress. They don't want any part of this. But, uh, you know, in order to get close enough to Lai Hassan for them to do anything, they're going to have to get relatively close. You know, standing that far back is not going to do a lot. You're going to have to come forward. You know, and this is why I say you can kind of set the AI up for these traps, you know, where uh, they just don't, the AI really doesn't know how to deal with it. You know, we basically trapped them into fighting at a disadvantage and fighting in a bad spot. So we are uh, about 30 minutes into the scenario, though, now, halfway there. And I'm bringing up another battery of guns just to set up on the flank here. Um, just to sh start shooting at this area over here, cover my flank. It's really just overkill. It's not necessary, but, uh, you know, I have all these guns, all these troops to play with, you know, way more troops than I'll ever need for this scenario. Some of these guys are already falling back. As I said, the AI does not really know how to approach this. 
they want to they want to shoot at the fort and you know get on another side of it uh, but they can't because this monstrosity of a fortress is sitting here waiting to destroy them Nevertheless, they know if we're going to do anything, we have to start moving forward. So they are slowly starting to inch their way forward. You're kidding me. I'm going to bring another brigade over there? I'm just being a glutton right now. I'm just doing this because I can. So now we're shooting. We're shooting into their flank. Our skirmishers have engaged, and we're firing into their flank. Nasty. And uh, yeah, I spent a lot of the scenario just kind of keeping my uh, keeping my guns. We have plenty of supply wagons. I think I have a supply wagon for each battery, literally. And I'm just moving this brigade a little closer to the guns. I'm just getting the leader out of there. Again, I just want to keep this back route open here so that I can constantly move the supply wagon kind of back and forth and keep the uh, keep the caissons uh, nice and charged. Pretty much just like that. Oh. Bye, fellas. So they didn't even come in canister range. They just took it from the in the flank from the skirmishers, and uh, that was enough to send them packing. I really would have loved to have seen this whole division try and attack this fortress. That would have made for great video, uh, as we completely demolished them. Um, you know, but the the AI doesn't do that. Uh, you know, it's tough to just move forward when you have an occupied, fortified position on your flank. So you can see Lyasant is taking more damage. We got almost halfway. Uh, and uh, we're losing some men in here. And pretty soon I'm going to send another battalion in there to uh, bolster them. And uh, it doesn't really matter how many losses we take with these brigades, because these brigades aren't used in La Hassan. Only Charlay's brigade is, and they're backed by La Belle Alliance right now, uh, taking a siesta. And that's, uh, you know... So it really doesn't matter that the other losses carry over, because that's not the brigade. These aren't the brigades we're going to be commanding. No, no, no. Ah, oh, the passing of this game sometimes. All right. We'll just move them back here, and then we'll, you know, we'll just, since the pathing is not cooperating, we'll just kind of move them halfway, and then kind of halfway to the end. It's probably because this battalion is just a little too close to the guns. We've got another battery set up here. Yeah, we'll just kind of inch them across. Eventually, I get that battalion out of there anyway, and that'll kind of free up the uh, the passing. But that's what's causing it is that uh, that this forward battalion right here is a little too close to the caissons, and it's causing passing issues for the uh, for the supply wagon. So we're just going to inch them across slowly, and uh, eventually, I get this battalion out of there and send them up to the left. And I'm, uh, I am sending a fresh 500-man battalion into the fort to, uh, 
uh, bolster the forces in there. We've uh, sent a lot of the we sent a lot of the units that were really causing a problem. Uh, this unit in particular, we sent them packing, so it, the pressure on the fort has eased up a little bit. A lot of these units are firing from pretty far away because they just don't want to get too close to this disaster waiting for them. Uh, you know, so they're they're awfully far away to really be putting a serious hurt in, on the men in the fort. They need to get closer, and that's just a real risky proposition for them with uh, a fortress on a, sitting on Lyonsop's flank. Uh, what I'm doing is just, I'm doing battery specific target, I'm just targeting these guys because they're moving forward, so I want to hit them as, uh, I want to hit them as hard as I can. We're not in canister range, but, uh, we're close enough that they are, you know, our shot, or our shell will certainly hit them. So these guys are withdrawing. Not a good idea to get that close, fellas. They got some skirmishers out there. But, you know, that's certainly a little bit better than trying to line units, but, uh, you know, they don't have enough of them. They only got like two skirmisher units out there. <coughs> oh, we've got them bottled up nicely. They're only able to bring fire basically against one side of the fort. You're never going to drive, uh, you know, enough troops out of there. And even if they do drive a unit out of there, so what? Look at all these troops we have back here that we can just send right into the fort to replenish them. You know, they are never, ever going to capture this fort. Not a chance. I thought I already did that. I must have forgot that I did it. And I'm just checking on these units there. They're very, very tired. Well, this one is the one I just sent in there. And that's why I sent a fresh unit in there, just so that if these tired units uh, route, I got a fresh unit in there uh, to hold the position until I can get more fresh units in there. And I'm just checking each one. These guys are doing okay. Well, they're resting. They're not even engaged. So they must be, like, in the rear of the fort. Which is a good thing, because they took a beating early on. They're, uh, they've lost 230 men. And they've only inflicted 15 casualties. I don't know how the hell that happened. But, uh, yeah, they got wrecked. Oh, look at this. Am I going to get my fortress fed? Is that going to happen? Got some units moving out to the, uh, the right here. My fortress is hungry. Feed me. Oh, you cowards. Are you going to set up there? So I'm moving a, uh, I'm moving this forward unit here for two reasons. One, it'll free up the passing issues with the supply wagon. Uh, and two, if they do decide to come forward, I want two assault columns here ready to, uh, smash them if they happen to, uh, try and make it close enough to be, to charge. So, uh, this artillery helped out in driving these guys off. And uh, now I'll split off some skirmishers again from the rear unit, just to cover this, uh, just to cover this battery. They're not in any danger or anything, but uh, it's just that's a habit for me to do that at this point. Uh, I do it without even thinking. I'm just like, oh look, artillery! I better put skirmishers in front of them. It's just what I do. Oh yes, please come forward. Feed my fortress. So now our passing is cleared up and we can just uh, go back to moving our supply wagon back and forth to keep the uh, keep the canister fire coming. There's another brigade I'm bringing up and I think I just put them behind that battery on the far left. 
which really doesn't even get engaged. You know, I'm just building up such an enormous amount of troops here that it's just going to be impossible to break through. Oh yes, come forward. Please feed my fortress. So, uh, they're close enough now that our skirmishes are engaged. And they are coming forward. And uh, I think I'm going to turn my battery a little bit just to face these guys. So we can give them the warm reception they so deserve. And they're real sketchy about trying to get too close to this. Can't say I blame them. Uh, so this unit is going to uh, is going to form line now. They've become engaged. And even if you have units on take command, like I do uh, with that unit, uh, if they come into engaged distance in column and they're in column by division, and you don't give them any further orders, they will still just form line and start shooting at the enemy. Um, that's just automatic. So uh, I say uh, that sounds like a plan. So we're going to move these guys up kind of right behind the skirmishers, and we will put the uh, assault column, the counterattacking force, right behind them. And uh, it doesn't need to be said, we're going to specifically target this batter, this, uh, this unit here. They are going to be the recipients of the canister fire. And I think I'm just going to slightly tweak the battery here. Just turn them a little bit so that uh, the guns uh, are facing the right way. And uh, we got another fresh guard unit here. Setting up to, uh, in a bad spot. Why would you set up like this? <laughs> you know, split between a wall. But uh, here they are. And uh, they will begin shooting it out with the troops in Lyasan here. And we'll bring our assault column right up behind the line. And shortly we will begin pounding these guys with canister fire. They're not coming clo as close as I would like. I, you know, I really want this whole division to kind of come forward, but uh, they're not as dumb as I was hoping. And there goes the canister. Party time. Now Ford has taken more damage. And uh, that guard unit is advancing. So, uh, this isn't going to work, fellas. You're not, you can't just stand here. You gotta either come forward and try and break it, or, or get out of there. You know, this you can't just stand in front of a fortress like that. That's what happens if you do. Smash. Oh, we got another supply wagon over here. We'll bring this one over for this battery. And, uh, all I'm doing with those bat uh, the supply wagons is just keeping the canister uh, at full supply so we can keep smashing these guys. So we have 3,500 points just on, what do we really got here? Almost 5,000 points for Derlon. So way above what we need for a major victory. Like I said, this is easy money right here. So this unit is trying to set up at point-blank range. They really want to bring their firepower to bear. So here they go, they're setting up in line. That gives me an idea.
Yep. We can just set these skirmishers up right on their flank. Pound them to hell. These guys are getting mauled. Look at this. There's probably half their number dead on the ground now. They're just getting smashed. And, uh, like I said, this is all going to help to make Lai Hassan, the brigade scenario, super easy because we are just smashing their forces to pieces right now. Uh, and, uh, the brigade we command, the uh, Charlais, is, like I said, back there having tea and crumpets by, uh, La Bella Alliance relaxing. So they're not going to have a single loss. Uh, and we will have completely smashed the, uh, the Allied forces, uh, when it carries over to the La Hassan Brigade scenario. And like I said, all you gotta do at the beginning of that is just take Charlet's Brigade and execute the exact same maneuver that I executed at the beginning here with Brigeau's Brigade and uh, s slick them out here to take two battalions, run them into the fort, and then take the other two battalions and uh, smash into the, uh, the Orchid there when they turn around to face them. Real easy stuff. Yep, so that did the trick with the skirmishers real quick. There is not much left of this unit. They are, like, all dead. It's practically been thinned to a skirmish line. So, oh yeah, there's a whole other part of this battlefield over here. And all these guns just shooting away. This is the only... We got one brigade over here. That's all we have left. <laughs> I've stripped the entire field. We got this one little brigade, Pigot's brigade here. And uh, I guess I'm just setting them up in line here. I don't know why. It's not like the Allies are going to attack. And that's uh, Bruce brigade over by Popalot there, who we don't have control over. So is this easy, guys, or is this easy? Huh? A lot easier than taking your whole core and trying to uh, smash Wellington's entire main line, isn't it? Ah, there they go. Uh, look at all that. Boy, did we kill them. Chewed them up like a meat grinder. I'm gonna recall the skirmishers that took some casualties and just kick out a fresh hundred man unit just to replace them. And again, I'm just avoiding the pathing issues, so we'll bring them up right behind this unit instead. So we have some new takers. And let's get our skirmishers out in front. Come on, boys. Come and get it. Keep feeding the fortress. It never gets full. So, 5,500 points for Counterlon. All in an easy day's work. Got our skirmishers engaged. Please come forward. Well, I wish all of this would just come forward. You know, it's only because the fort is right here. If the fort wasn't here, they they would they they would take the bait. They would come and get it, and we'd smash them to pieces. But uh, you know, because this fort is right here on their flank, and if they try to move past, the AI won't really move past it because. Once they come 
near it, they basically engage it. Uh, so they, it's the only way to, for them to pass it is to be further out, away from the fort. So that's why we're not getting, like, you know, the whole brigade or the whole division kind of coming forward towards it, because they can't just ignore this. But uh, here comes a brave column, and uh, this is the only column of real men in this, uh, in this scenario. They're going to go for it. They're going to try. They're going to get wrecked, but they're going to try. So they're going to need a lot of canister fire as they're coming forward. And uh, they're going for it. Brave lads, every one. But uh, as I described in episode four of the Grog Toolbar Demystified, this is how a fortress grinds you up. They're losing men as they approach. As soon as they start charging, I'm going to recall the skirmisher unit. Uh, that's going to force them to reform. Here they come. Recall the skirmisher unit. I'm going to shoot at them for a while. But when they start to reform, I'm going to charge them while they're reforming. There they go. They're starting to reform. Let's hit them. There they go. Boom. While they're reforming, completely vulnerable, they are going to get smashed. And uh, this unit is now in engaged distance, and that's why it's automatically forming line. And uh, they surrender. And, uh, yep. I guess we must have just killed every last one of them. <laughs> and that is how a fortress grinds you up. That's why it's so dangerous to try and approach one. You know, very, very hard to overwhelm. I, like I said, I've never actually seen the AI do it. You know, I imagine a, a human player might have better luck because they wouldn't just send a unit piecemeal like that. They would try and bring a whole brigade or a whole division or, you know, a massive number of troops uh, to, to, to try and overwhelm it. And uh, as I said, even then, I think it would be difficult. But uh, the AI just, yeah, I've never actually seen it try and, uh, never seen it break through a fortress. So, and then, uh, yeah, then we just go and reset it up. Kick out another hundred men. Oh, Four thousand points just for Bourgeot. I guess I'm moving another uh, another battalion in there just to shore up the fort, and we'll just move this whole brigade right up behind the fort. Like I said, we have an endless supply of men that we can keep filling into the fort here. I don't know where the skirmishers think they're going. Dummies, I wanted you up by the line. I don't know. Where are you running? And the canister fire keeps on a coming. So we've only got about five minutes left in the scenario here. This was a uh, this was a devastating attack here. Actually, it was a real easy attack, and then it was a devastating defense. So, uh, yeah, certainly not the way uh, Derlon's uh, assault went historically. Probably not what you guys were expecting to see at all. Uh, but, uh, you know, my job is to find the easy ways to win scenarios so you guys don't have to. Yeah, 
man, it doesn't get much easier than this. Really, the uh, the total number of points you need for a major victory in this scenario should be higher. Uh, the problem with it only being 3,000 points is that any one objective will do it if you capture it early enough. And the fact that Lihasant does not Lai Hassan does not start off occupied, uh, like I said, means you can just stay out of engaged distance of all the troops in the orchard and just slip around and get in there. And, you know, you're basically, it only takes about 15 minutes to do that. You know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it is. And you're sitting here occupying the objective uh, for the whole rest of the scenario. Um, and you're, a you're basically able to tank all your forces around it and make it unapproachable. We have 6,600 points for counter lawn. We have inflicted 2,800 casualties so far, and we've taken about 1,000. Which, is for a court attack, is not bad at all, is it? 1,000 men out of 20,000? It's just a flesh wound. And uh, Charlet's brigade, the one we use for the, we'll be using for uh, the Lai Hassan brigade scenario, we didn't even use them at all. You know, they're, like I said, they're back there having, uh, you know, biscuits and grog by uh, La Belle Alliance there, just chilling. Still smashing these guys with cannons. Come on, you guys gotta run. Look, look at all the dead bodies on the ground. You can actually see the outline of like where every battalion was, that where they, where they were standing. You know, that got smashed with canister fire. And like I said, this is just, this one the single battalion stuff, guys. It's it's never gonna work. You're never gonna. You can't. You either gotta come forward and try and overwhelm it, or you gotta. You gotta do that. You gotta run away from it. You can't stand in front of a fortress like this. You're gonna get pulverized if you do. So a lot of units are falling back now. They have had enough. We have this one guard unit here. They're again gonna come forward, but there's only two minutes, a minute and a half left in the scenario. And uh, if they come too close again, I'll just send the skirmishers out on the flank. But with only a minute left in the scenario, I don't think there's even going to be enough time. So there they go. There's their imprint where they were. Like I said, basically impregnable. Never seen the AI been able to successfully mount an attack against the fortress. So I'm running the skirmishers out there, but uh, there's only 30 seconds left in the scenario. Nothing's really going to come of it. But I don't think I had taken note of the clock at this point. I think I see it now, though. Yep. So here we go. Counter Lon. Major victory. So we got 7,000 points inflicted. 3,000 casualties and took 1,000 casualties of our own. Not bad at all. Pretty, uh... You know, just a flesh wound. 1,000 men out of a 20,000 men corps. That's nothing. So, uh, yeah, that is pretty much it, fellas, uh, for this scenario. Um, I'm sure it's probably n not what you expected to see. Um, 
I'm sure you expected to see me, you know, head first, go, uh, you know, go headlong into the allied lines. I'm sure that would have been a lot more exciting, but, um, you know, there are actually plenty of other uh, YouTube players that have done that, uh, you know, and uh, yeah, sure, it is exciting. Uh, and watching them get majorly defeated is also <laughs> exciting. Um, you know, what I always want to do is show you guys the easiest, most efficient, most dependable, and most repeatable ways to a major victory. By doing what we did here today, not only did we make things very easy on ourselves, but you also we also made it so that the Lihasant Brigade scenario is going to be a complete piece of cake now. Like I said, all you have to do with Charlet's Brigade is the exact same maneuver I did with Bergeau's Brigade in this scenario. We smashed the Allied forces around uh, Lai Hassan. All those losses that we inflicted on them are going to carry over to that scenario. And the brigade you play, Charlet's Brigade, we didn't even use, so they've taken not a single loss. Um, you know, so I can't think of any more efficient way to set that up than what we did here today um so uh that's it for this scenario guys uh until next time see you later